Hey everyone, I'm Armor Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of the War Master Zara video. In this video, I am going to level her up all the way to level 130, so that means I'm going to get her all the way to rank five. Once again, this is all because of Social Point. They gave me the monster, the cells, the gems, the food, everything I need to showcase this monster. So let's level her up and I am going to go step by step. That way you guys know what skills she get. Because in case you don't know, the way it works with War Master is every single rank up, they get a particular skill. So the first skill she gets, let's see what it is. I apologize for the loud clicking. Her first skill is, her first skill is Crypsis. Removes all negative status effects from one ally, blocks all damage except nature element on one ally, requires cooldown. So we have a nature shield, botanophobic shield. This will block everything except nature attacks on a single ally monster. This is very similar to Alvira's light shield to, um, let's see who else I can think of. Imperial light shield from Queen Luthien. And Volgar the Pure also has a skill like this, except for the light element. Now we have one for the nature element. So you'll take no damage except from nature based attacks. Let's continue. Let's rank her up one more time and see what other skills she gets. So rank up. Rank up, pass this, go to feed, and her rank 2 skill is, so at level 110 she gets the following skill. She gets Stingy Nettle, deals moderate special damage to one enemy, applies damage mirror to all of your allies. So all of your allies get 100% damage reflection for one turn. So I'm curious, what do you guys think about her? At rank 2, how feasible is she? Do you like the skills? Do you wish she had better skills? And I ask this because I think a lot of players could have been to get her to rank 2. Getting her to rank 3 and 4, I think that's a challenge for a majority of players because there are so many orbs involved to actually get her that far. So anyhow, let's feed her all the way to rank 3, level 115. We get an area version of our rank 1 skill. Blocks all damage except nature element on all of your allies. So all of your allies get nature protection, which means that the enemy has no nature based attacks, no nature based monsters. You are pretty much protected for that one turn and then you can use it on another of your allies and this one also removes negative effects. The area doesn't remove negative effects but the single target one does. Alright so then we have one last final skill. Does anyone know what that last and final skill is? Well in my personal opinion it's her best skill. It reminds me a lot of Samuel and if you don't know what it is, it is what makes Samuel really great in my opinion. His Samuel warrior skill well, War Master Zara kind of copied it. Removes all negative side effects from one ally, applies precision to one ally, gives one extra turn to an ally. So the difference is you don't get any damage boost, and I don't think Sammy's removes negative effects, although I could be wrong. But yeah, here we have it. These are all of your skills group 4 skills. I love Transfusion. Savio Transfusion I think is an amazing skill. Increased accuracy and an immediate extra turn and removing any negative debuff the enemy may have, or I mean your ally may have. So if they were blind, the blind is gone. If they were had 100% damage reduction, if they were stunned or frozen, doesn't matter. That negative effect is gone, they get an immediate extra turn, you give them increased accuracy so their attack will not miss, it's a guaranteed hit. So pretty darn awesome. Now you'll notice that she has pretty high cooldowns. 4 turn cooldown, 3 turn cooldown here, 3 turn cooldown, 2 turn cooldown. And again, she doesn't really have any common nature skills like I was really expecting some healing skill, some life regen, maybe a life regen, stamina regen, some sort of protection. I don't know, when, when I think nature monster, I think of a healer, and she doesn't really have that. It would And it would have been really nice if she did have a healing skill, considering her trait gives all of your allies 50% more total life. So wouldn't you want to maximize by having some sort of healing skill? At least life regen, that would have been nice, a team life regen. But I guess that's not the case, although instead we did get the Batanophobic Shield, which blocks everything except nature based attacks. So you know what, I can't complain too much. So now the question is, if you were to get this monster fully ranked up, well she's not even fully ranked up so let's rank her up all the way. Rank up, rank 5, speed that up, so now she is fully, fully a war master, level 130, rank 5. Let's feed her up just for the sake of feeding so we can see her stats once she's fully ranked. And I'll get rid of everything else. And I'm not, and by the way, the skills group, all of the skills group 4 skills, they might not necessarily be the best or the most ideal for what you want to use. So don't think that just because if you do manage to rank up with this monster all the way that you need to give her all the skills group 4 skills, maybe you might want to keep the AoE poison. Or maybe, I personally, I think I would equip the nature and special weakness. I think that's more valuable than maybe some of your other skills. Or maybe you want to keep the torture immunity, the team one. So don't think that you need to run all of skills group 4 skills. That's optional. For the purpose of this video, I am going to be using them just so I can showcase them. Especially, I'm not necessarily sure if you need both of these. I think just the area one is more than enough. And then, I'm a little iffy on how I feel about the damage mirror. Like, sure, it's nice, you reflect 100% of the damage. 
but I don't know if I want that. I think maybe some of the other skill might be better. I don't know. It really depends on you, your playing style, the team combination, a lot of things. I think actually in terms of defense, I think this would be pretty good. Run stinging, run area, run transfusion, and then maybe instead of the single nature blocker, maybe the special nature weakness, or maybe the poison, maybe the torture immunity. I don't know. You have, I think this is one skill that you could potentially replace, which also means that if you get War Master Zara and you rank her to rank one, you're going to have one of the probably not one of her better uh, skills group four skills. Anyhow, with that being said, she is fully ranked for her relics. Let's give her, I guess, just whatever I have when the warrior dies. No, let's not give her that. Staffs, let's just, no, I guess I'm using everything for war, so we won't equip any relics. Um, for her stats, let's see, her power is 4298, her life is 58997, and her speed is 4508. What runes would you give this monster? Honestly, you'd probably want to give her a life rune and two team speed. I think that's the best. You could do team, you could also do team life if you want to, to maximize on her trait. But I honestly think some combination of single life and team speed or team, team life would be good. So this is my personal recommendation. And the reason I'm not using high level runes is because honestly, even if I do use high level runes, it doesn't really showcase your potential, if that makes sense. This is, in my personal opinion, this is more of a monster that is going to shine on defense. On offense, not necessarily that much because at the end of the day, you still need a denier to deny the enemy team and you still need an attacker to win. With this monster, you don't necessarily have a win condition with her. I mean, maybe her, no, her Tracia stuns. Like, because when you look at her skills, all she can do is block the enemy's attacks and she can reflect 100% damage. So strength runes don't really help her and she can churn transfer, which is good. So she's a pure, pure support monster. She's there to do treachery support she's there to go last or maybe second to last you can do transfusion to transfer to your attacker twice the attacker can do an, a self buff skill and then attack or you know you have you have room to navigate with this monster you don't need to be going first with her you can go last or you can go second to last at least in your turn order and again you're really after her trait her trait the fact that you get torture immunity which means you're protected from dot's and the fact that your monsters get more life it makes it harder for them to be killed that's really her biggest asset i would say her skills at 130, they become super valuable, but at level 100, from what you saw in the previous video, not that great. Anyhow, with that being said, um, that's why I'm not giving her the good runes. I don't really think I need to to showcase her. With that being said, let's just do some PvP battles, and let's see if I actually get a chance to showcase her. Hopefully I will, because I did drop in trophies, so I get... I'm probably going to be able to do some more legitimate battles. And this is kind of what I mean. Watch, let me pick... Let's just do Baba, and let's do an attacker. Because, you see, the thing with this monster, in my personal opinion, considering they're treachery and they go, they're there, it's hard to showcase a monster like this on offense, because a lot of the times, you're still going to rely on your denier to deny, and your attacker to attack, and so, again, she's there for, like, that support in case something goes wrong, in case you couldn't kill an enemy monster, you need to protect your monsters, again, she can churn transfer, she can, she can do this, she can do that, like right now, see, I with my denier already and my attacker, I killed two enemy monsters. I could do protection. I could do damage mirror. Or I could turn transfer to the attacker, which is probably one of her most valuable skills. However, you don't get it until it's ranked four, which is going to cost a lot of orbs. So see, like a monster like this, it's it's hard to utilize. And I don't I think the best way to Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Oh shoot, darn it, I did it again. I'm not supposed to win. Oh my gosh. I apologize. I apologize so much. I am so, so darn sorry. Oh my gosh, Trey, I am so sorry. I, I get so distracted when I'm making this video because I'm just having so much fun. Um, shoot, sorry. Take a revenge. Beat me. It's not going to happen again. I apologize so, so much, Grace and Trey. I am sorry. Uh, let's just continue on to the next battle. So sorry about that. Carlitos. All right. Click fight. And let's see. All right. Now the enemy went first. And see, if you find yourself in this kind of situation where the enemy goes first, well, let's just play it out. Let's see what happens. In this case, well, fortunately, I brought a denier that is immune to one of the denies from the enemy. And I got frozen. Okay, so this is what would happen if, like, this is a real thing that would happen if you're facing monsters that are faster than you, that you can't outspeed. So unless you bring some way to protect, you're going to be in trouble. Unless you have Elvira like I did in the previous video, you are going to be in trouble. I turn transfer to a Gersis. He attacked me, it's strong against me, and then Etna, ouch, I am close to dying. But look at that, no DOTs are applying, no quicksand landed, no burning landed. Fist from outer space, it's just a special based attack. 
And cool, I'm still alive. So this kind of showcased what her somewhat potential is. Thanks to her trade alone, my monsters have that increased HP. They were able to survive. If it wasn't for that 50% more boost, my monsters would have died. So even though I went second, I managed to survive. So that's awesome. Let's do the stun because I need the stun. And also, um, again, going back to her trait, which is what really shines. Igursus landed a burning on my whole team, and he landed a, qu a quicksand on my Zara, but it didn't work thanks to my trait. So the trait really is the thing that shines on this monster. Uh, let's see, let's kill you. And cool, I might actually win this. Well, I'm not gonna win. I am not going to win. Let's do best show hits. I should have actually attacked Igursus since Isofex was stunned. All right, let's see what you do. So he protected Igursus. She protected Igursus from Anything except nature-based attacks. That doesn't mean I can't possess him. You are possessed. And I just hope he doesn't alt himself or anything. And Nightmare. So here, I actually, this was a really great battle. This battle did showcase how Zara could potentially help you out just with her trade alone. So, because she hasn't really had a chance to attack, but just her trade alone has managed to help the team survive. Because again, Igrisus should have killed my whole team, but thanks to my trait, thanks to the torch immunity, and thanks to the buff, thanks to the life buff, I was able to survive. And then if I wanted to, even if my monsters were weak, just applying that damage mirror, that reflection, I think that would be enough to win the battle. But I'm going to exit out because I am not supposed to be winning these battles. Again, I apologize, Trey, but let's move on. Let's take on Black Joe. Let's see how this battle goes. Click fight. And again, um, you should have a super high life rune on your Zara if you do get her because you need her to stay alive. If she stays alive, you don't lose your trait. The minute she dies, you lose that 50% buff. Let's recharge. Ready to hunt, so he's setting up. Hopefully I recharge and not attack my monster. Maybe I do Bloodthirsty, that could help. And Bestial hits, no. Darn it. All right, let's recharge. Oh, area protection. Blocks everything except nature attacks. Original Cracker, AoE stun. And then Aggressors might kill me. There's that AoE burn, which didn't land. The burn didn't land. Monsters are still stunned. Let's speed this up. And still stunned, still stunned, still can't attack. All right, I lost my monster, lost the buff, and lost the battle. So, again, like, the, the thing about uh, this kind of monster that's a support monster that's there to help your teammates go, that's there just to support your monster and do something at the very end, kind of hard to showcase because she's really there for that treachery support. She's not the main attacker. She's not going to be the one killing the enemy. She's not going to be the one going before the enemy. Like you could go and set up a damage mirror, but that doesn't really do much. So let me really quickly get more attacks or at least one more. And let's showcase another battle. Let's see if I can show that damage mirror in action. Maybe against, you know what? I'm going to have to bring Elvira. Let's bring Elvira. I, I'm telling you, I always go back to her. Elvira. Let's put you in there. And let's put in a tank, a tank, tank, tank monster Igursus. Let's take on that Volt because I want him to attack me endlessly with the damage mirror on. So see, this is one combo you can always definitely utilize. Elvira to give your team evasion to protect you so that you can do something at the end. Shadow Yell, Blessed Water, and he's going to waste his stamina. So he's not actually recharging like he did in the previous time. Okay, that's cool. So Assault, Assault, waste your stamina, 20k. Static Shocks, 50k. You have a lot of stamina, boy. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and recharge. All right, let me set up the damage mirror, Stinging. Let me hit Nishin's pet. All right, I have 100% damage reflection. And so the damage mirror is really cool with her because your teams are so your teammates are so tanky because they have that 50% life increase. So I just lost 10,000 HP and I reflect 10,000 HP. Oh shoot, I hope I don't kill them all. He does bless water, giving Baltic a boost. Thank you, that actually helps me. Static shocks, 42, 56. And it was supposed to reflect. Oh, but she still has evasion. So I'm not taking any damage, so I'm not dealing any damage. Well, that's no fun. Don't attack. Why are you attacking? Of all the times, why are you attacking her? Okay, this is nice. So I, I'm pretty sure I get to reflect this. So let's see how much damage I take. Let's see how much damage I take. I am taking 10,000 and I reflect 10,000. So see the damage mirror does really work for her with her tanky life, with her trait specifically. Recharge, 
this is gonna go to an ally. He takes no damage except nature attacks. I actually want to showcase that. So hopefully I can set up. Darn, I got possessed again. I was hoping protecting light. This is just like that nature weakness. Blocks everything but light attacks. Again, she Zara would block everything but nature attacks. I do want to showcase it though. So I hope I can have Voltic attack me. So I'm gonna let Voltic stay alive. So let me get rid of that annoying Nishin's pet. And then let me see. Yeah, let me set up that nature blocker. Oh, area. <laughs> so it's set up on his side. All right, let's speed this up. Blessed water, static shocks, assault, static shocks, 20k, static shocks, recharge. Let's see if I can get rid of that um, Lord of Atlantis. Let me turn transfer to myself for fun, just to showcase that, I guess. So yeah, she has a turn transfer skill that gives increased accuracy, removes negative effects. Blessed water, 20k, static shocks, and still alive. Cool, still alive. All right, recharge. Etna. All right, then there was just Volt by himself. I hopefully have the nature. Okay, let me apply it on myself. All right, let's see. 50. Come on, attack me. Assault. And an alt. Okay, cool. So I'll showcase it with the alts. As you can see, I took absolutely no damage from the enemy's alt, thanks to my botanophobic shield. And so anyhow, let's see what to do. I'm just gonna exit out of the battle. So yeah, I think that's pretty much gonna be it for this video. I could do another battle, but I don't think it's really worth showcasing. If anything, I can just do adventure map and I can showcase the nature protection. But again, I think most of you are already kind of familiar with it. There's not too much to showcase, I would say. Let's click fight. And perfect, I'm going last. So we'll recharge, we'll recharge. And we'll do the team one area. And my team can only take damage from nature-based attacks. So when the enemy attacks me, even though it's a fire-based attack, even though they have an elemental advantage of oh, the top skill, it's not going to do anything. Viper's Gaze didn't do anything. No damage. I got immobilized still, but no damage. Life of the Afterlife, whatever attack he just did, no damage. So pretty cool, right? And again, I can't get hit with torture immunities either. So I really do think for her trait, that's that's her primary purpose. And obviously, if you can rank her up, her, her ranked up skills... While they're not like, I would personally say they're not on the league of other Warmaster monsters. Like, I don't know, again, like, the turn transfer skill, great, but it's, at the end of the day, it's just a turn transfer skill. Um, Necromancer has a turn transfer at rank 2, I think. At rank 2, at rank 1, he has a revival turn transfer. Um, the light protection, Elvira has that uh, before even being ranked up, like, I don't know, overall, I'm not feeling this monster that much for offense. Again, you did see a PvP battle where she did help me successfully win in offense but i think maybe the the place she truly truly shines the most it is going to be in something like defense because you can partner her up with like a sammy some other monster sammy can have a life rune this monster can have a life rune sammy has um he can do revival he has the life regen skill this monster is super tanky has an extra 50 percent boost so like definitely on defense i think that's where she shines the most for offense I'm, I'm just not feeling it as much, but that's just my personal opinion. You guys have seen this monster at 100 and at 130. Now I want to hear from all of you guys. What do you guys think of Warmaster Zara? How do you think she compares to other nature monsters? How do you think she compares to the Warmaster monsters? Like, I'm really, really curious to know where you guys would rank this monster in terms of what priority. Should you get it right away or can you kind of do it without getting her until the very end? I am really curious to hear it. And does your opinion differ whether she's level 100 or level 130? Whatever your thoughts may be, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much. Once again, a huge thanks to Social Point. I apologize for winning that player versus player again. And with that being said, I will see you all next time.